Hello Space Fans, welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, NASA's Juno spacecraft prepares for its arrival at Jupiter on July 4th. ESO's gravity experiment returns its first observations of the galactic center, and NASA approves operations of the Hubble Space Telescope for another five years. As of today, June 24, 2016, NASA's Juno mission is 17 days and 13.8 million kilometers from Jupiter. Scheduled to arrive on the evening of July 4th, once there, Juno will fire its main engine for 35 minutes, placing it into a polar orbit around the gas giant. While situated in this unique orbit, Juno will probe beneath the obscuring cloud cover of Jupiter and study its aurora to learn more about the planet's origins, structure, atmosphere, and magnetosphere. When it arrives, Juno will get closer to Jupiter than any spacecraft that has come before so that we can learn more about the largest planet in our solar system. Now this spacecraft is going to get close. NASA has a series of 37 close approaches planned during the mission, which will eclipse the previous record for getting close to Jupiter set in 1974 by NASA's Pioneer 11 spacecraft, which was 43,000 kilometers. But getting this close to Jupiter does not come without a price. Being this close to the Jovian planet means that the spacecraft will be exposed to a lot of harmful radiation, most of it in the form of x-rays. So each and every time Juno orbits Jupiter, it will be exposed to the equivalent of 100 million dental x-rays. Now the mission navigators did what they could though by designing the orbit such that it minimizes radiation exposure and allowed it to survive long enough to get the required science data that they need. So Juno's orbit is rather interesting. It resembles a flattened oval that approaches Jupiter over the North Pole rather high, and then it very quickly drops to an altitude that's below the planet's radiation belts as the spacecraft races toward the South Pole. So it'll spend about one Earth day really close to the planet. That's how long each flyby is. And then as it approaches the South Pole, the orbit will carry the spacecraft really fast around the, around the South Pole and way away from Jupiter, which will get it out of the way of any harmful radiation that can mess up the spacecraft. Now, Juno has plenty of special radiation-hardened electrical wiring and shielding surrounding its sensors. The highest profile piece of armor Juno has is a first-of-its-kind titanium vault, which carries the spacecraft's flight computer and the electronic heart of many of its science instruments. So weighing it at almost 400 pounds, which is 172 kilograms, the vault will reduce the exposure to radiation by 800 times. Without this vault, Juno's electronics would more than likely fry before the end of the first flyby of the planet. So while 400 pounds of titanium can do a lot, it can't do this forever in an extreme radiation environment like around Jupiter. The quantity and the energy of the high energy particles is just too much. However, Juno's special orbit allows the radiation dose and the degradation of the instruments to accumulate slowly, allowing Juno to do a remarkable amount of science for 20 months after it gets there. And of course, I will keep you posted. <laughs> now, if you want to learn more about the Juno mission, watch my space documentary, NASA's Juno Mission to Jupiter, Investigating a Colossus. It's up there, the link right up there. Next, remember back in SFN 149, I told you about ESO's gravity instrument, getting first light? Back then, in January, they were testing gravity with the 1.8 auxiliary telescopes with an eye towards putting it on the 8.2 meter VLT in 2016. Well, this week they've announced that the first observations from the 8.2 meter are in, and early tests are, are a resounding success. Now, for those who don't remember, gravity is an interferometer, which combines light from four telescopes to achieve the same special resolution and precision as measuring positions in a telescope that's up to 130 meters in diameter. Now, these gains in resolving power and positional accuracy, which is a factor of 15 over, the in, over having just individual 8.2 meter telescopes, will enable gravity to make amazingly accurate measurements of astronomical objects. Its primary science goal is to make very precise measurements of the center of our galaxy, specifically the area around the 4 million solar mass black hole that lurks there. Astronomers hope to understand more about this black hole by getting detailed observations of the stars and other stuff that may be flying around it. 
Although the position and the mass of the supermassive black hole have been known since 2002, by studying the stars in orbit around it, they hope to learn more specifics about the gravitational field in the region. Of particular interest is a star known as S2. Now this star has an orbit of only 16 years, which means they can get very precise measurements of its trajectory in a relatively short amount of time. And with that test, the first observations with gravity, astronomers were already very excited. The gravity team has used the instrument to observe S2 as it orbits the black hole at the center of our galaxy. And these tests have demonstrated that gravity is sensitive enough and it was able to see this faint star in just a few minutes of observation. So what's next? Well, in 2018, <laughs> it's becoming a real magical year in astronomy, the S2 star will be at its closest to the black hole, just 17 light hours away, and traveling at almost a 30 million kilometers per hour, or 2.5% the speed of light. At this distance, the effects due to general relativity will be the most pronounced, and gravity observations will yield their most important science results. And this opportunity will not be repeated until it comes all the way back around again, in 16 years. There's lots happening in 2018, so stay tuned folks, I will keep you posted. <laughs> Finally, NASA announced this week that the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been in orbit over our heads for 26 years, providing unprecedented views of our cosmos, has approved $2 billion to extend the operating contract for another five years. This extends the contract from July 1st through June 30th, 2021. This contract extension covers the work necessary to continue the science program of the Hubble mission by the Space Telescope Science Institute, and the support includes the products and services required to execute science system engineering, science ground system development, science operations, science research, grants management, and public outreach support for Hubble and data archive support for missions in the Mikulki Archive for Space Telescopes. Must call Mikulski Archive, M Mikulski Archive for Space Telescope. There, that's it. So, yay. <laughs> the plan has always been to have Hubble operating at the same time JWST is up and observing at the L2 point after its launch in 2018. And this action makes sure that the money is there to make that happen. Now, hopefully, Hubble will be up there a lot longer than that. The scientific return of having both instruments up at the same time observing the universe cannot be overstated. These are very exciting times. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters who keep SFN going. I could not do this without you guys. You're making these episodes absolutely possible. And thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, 